Having completed your build, uh, you need the all-important uh, completion certificate in order to be able to sell or rent out your property. Uh, so that's what we're going to be covering in this video. So for context, we are in the build it phase and we are in the fix stage. Uh, so when we look at the different things that we need to do, uh, we're looking at sound tests. So uh, this is only applicable if you've not got a detached building. So if you have a detached building then sound tests are not required but if you have any other type of building such as a terraced house semi-detached or flats then you are going to need a sound test and this is to make sure that there is not an unacceptable amount of transition of sound uh, between the properties um, if you remember like uh, perhaps going back in, if you've stayed in an older property then the transmission of sound uh, was quite prolific um, and this is really just to try and get around this uh, in order to make sure that people have a comfortable noise free living space and next we have air tests um, so this is where they will come out a specialist company and they will make sure that um, all the openings that are there in terms of like windows and uh, uh, cooker hoods are sealed off uh, but it, what it's really trying to do is to make sure that you don't have uh, a, a, any air leakages so the air leakages what that would mean is that then you'd have drafts so they're preventing that so uh, they're looking for a, a certain level and that will have been specified at the time of your building control submission so what essentially what you're doing here is you're saying this is um, where we said we would be in terms of efficiency of the building and now we are proving that we are there um, and so uh, this is really um, a lot of people find this quite nervous but if you've been really good with your quality control throughout the build then it's something not generally to be uh, uh, worried about um, we have snagging uh, there will always be chips and bits and pieces that have been missed uh, whether that be in the decoration whether that be uh, just knocks that have happened uh, and so this is really a case of going through this with the building with a th uh, fine tooth comb and making sure that you cover everything in terms of the snagging and um, once the client actually moves into the property assuming that this is a build to sell um, then they may produce their own snagging list but what you're really trying to do is to get all that covered so as that there really is uh, nothing for them to pick up and um, I kind of pride myself in our own business that uh, we very rarely have very much that comes up in, in terms of snagging. There will always be a few things uh, but what you don't want to, um, the client coming up with is a list of 20-30 items uh, because you really should have caught those. Uh, but you will miss some, uh, that's just inevitable uh, because there's an awful lot uh, to, to check and obviously once somebody is living in the place uh, they're much more likely to pick up on those things that you may have missed um, and then you've got your actual client handover um, so this is just essentially uh, making sure that they understand how everything in the house works so you want to be able to demonstrate that to them um, if uh, for instance that the uh, there's some of the things that maybe for instance like the heating control because they're getting much more more and more complicated and uh, what I often find is quite a good thing to do is to have the plumbing uh, or heating engineer uh, walk me through it and I video that um, and then I'm able to give the client a copy of that video so that they have something to keep referencing back to uh, because in all likelihood even if you tell them how it works they're probably going to get a phone call the next day asking them what what about this and asking you more questions um, so it just it really in in all honesty it will save you time um, there will be various booklets and pamphlets and everything that will be collected in terms of all the different bits of equipment they've installed like ovens microwaves fridges 
um, the, the heating system. Um, so what we do is that we create a lever arch folder with uh, clear pockets and we put all those manuals in there so that we're able to hand that over to uh, the, the client. Uh, similarly, if you were renting it out, you would want to do the same so as that they have all the instruction manuals. Um, so that's, that's very important. Um, and then you need to go through all the different things that are going to come in for your warranty sign off. Um, so you need to show that there's evidence that works have been completed. That will be carried out the building control officer um, and the different things that they will expect, inspect. So they're going to inspect that, they're going to inspect uh, the roof void, they're going to look at the internal works, they're going to look at the um, inter external works as well. Uh, they are then also going to want documentary evidence uh, from your heating engineer, uh, from your um, electrician, uh, that all the tests and it's, compl it's compliant um, and they'll probably want a drains test which they'll probably do at the time but they may want uh, a further drains test to be carried out um, and you need to have all those things and the completion certificate uh, signed off and, and issued before you can get your build warranty uh, signed off because they will want to see as part of their completion process the build warranty. Um, and then what you want to do is create a valuation pack. So similarly when you first looked at the site you would have looked at comparable values um, and now obviously you have a completed building so I would be going for valuations uh, looking at similar properties and the idea is that you are looking to do a lot of the work that a surveyor is going to do in any case uh, but you're providing them that with information and they may not f they may not do the same level of uh, care in terms of looking for comparables that you are you have got very much a vested interest and while they're being employed by you or evaluate a valuer um, it's important that you really uh, get involved in that process so if you are then able to hand them a folder with all the valuations that they uh, uh, that you've come across then it's much more likely to help a positive valuation when uh, they come to give their valuation because uh, they will they will check it uh, and they will see that those valuations are correct and they may look for some of their own valuations but they will still have that base information which will help uh, put the value where you believe the value to be. Um, I'm not saying that you can manipulate the situation, but you are helping the situa situation along by providing them with values. Um, and then we come to uh, finally selling your houses, which is probably going to be through estate agents and, uh, and the like of that. So again, you want that valuation pack for estate agents because they are going to put a value on the property. Um, incidentally, I've noticed that a lot of people who watch these videos, uh, only about 15 or 14% have actually subscribed to the channel. It really would help us if you could subscribe uh, to the channel if you enjoyed this video or other videos. Um, it makes a significant difference and would allow us to bring guests on uh, who would be of interest to you. So it really could improve the output that we put into this channel. Um, if you'd like a copy of my book, incidentally, you a property developer, currently I'm offering that for only the price of postage and packaging. Um, and so there'll be a link up here and a link in the description below. If you would like to watch the next video, which is the last one in this series, uh, then the, be watch this video here. And if you'd like to watch the video prior to this, then watch this video here. Until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.